Hey, my name is Lance. The Zipline Racer is a super fast and fun project. It's especially exciting to set up two ziplines and then race them against each other and see who can go faster by tinkering with the number of rubber bands, how much it's wound up, and the shape and size of this paper cutout. So I'll show you how to build it, and then I'll show you some ideas that you can use to make your racer go as fast as possible. First, glue three craft sticks together with one stick connecting the other two. Then glue on two more sticks like this, leaving about an inch remaining on the end here and here. Finish the structure by gluing on these supporting diagonal pieces. Next, we're gonna add three paper clips. Bend two of them so that they're fully opened up like this. Attach a paper clip here and here using hot glue and tape for the sturdiest connection possible. For the third paper clip, bend it open at a 90 degree angle. Then glue and tape that onto one of the ends of the structure. Make sure the bent paper clip is pointing this way. Fit a propeller onto the other end of the structure, making sure that the metal hook is also on the underside. Then connect the propeller and this paper clip with a long rubber band. If you don't have one of these, you can tie two regular rubber bands together, or you can experiment with rubber bands of different shapes and sizes. Okay, to prepare this to go onto the zip line, these paper clips on the top here need to be rotated like this and like this. This way the paper clips will be able to rest on the zip line and slide smoothly on it. The last step is just to tape or glue a piece of paper onto the structure. Okay, we are ready to wind it up. Face the propeller toward you and use the index finger of one hand to wind it clockwise. If you try winding it counterclockwise, it's not going to work. As you're winding it, keep an eye on the rubber band. You'll notice that after it gets fully coiled up, it starts to coil on itself again. Keep going until the entire rubber band is double coiled. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, we're ready to launch. Gently rest the racer onto the zip line. Arrange your hands so that just one of them is holding the propeller near the underside of the racer. Then just let go. If you pull down on the racer before letting go, it can pop off of the zip line. So when launching, just make sure to release gently. Okay, so that's how to build and test it. Um, testing it is a little bit of a learning curve and there is some risk that the zipline racer is going to fly off the zipline and go in a random direction. So if you're doing this with kids and they're testing on their own, I highly recommend having them wear some safety glasses. So how can you make this go faster? Well, probably the most obvious thing is you can tinker with the rubber bands. One long rubber band works pretty well, but it's pretty fun to experiment with different combinations. Like what happens if you use one long rubber band and one regular rubber band? Or you might think that three long rubber bands will work even better than one. In fact, let's try that out. I'm actually gonna wear my safety glasses for this because I'm not totally sure what's gonna happen. Okay, three, two, one. Whoa. <laughs> Well, you can see that um, obviously more power isn't necessarily better. This design actually had so much power that it destabilized and came off the zipline. Well, this leads me to explain how this works and something that you can tinker with to make your design go even faster. So obviously when the propeller is being wound up, the rubber bands are storing energy and then when that's released, the rubber bands spin the other way, turn the propeller and generate thrust. However, an equal amount of force is also being applied to the other end where the rubber bands are connected, which means that while the propeller wants to spin one way, the rest of the zipline racer actually wants to spin the other way. So what you saw when I tested this design with three rubber bands is that actually there was so much force being applied not just to the propeller, but to the whole structure of the zipline racer that it was able to turn it upside down and knock it off the zipline, which is why the zipline racer has this paper cutout. This helps prevent the zipline racer from flipping upside down. Because if the racer starts to flip upside down, this paper pushes against the surrounding air. That air resistance makes it harder for the racer to turn along this axis. So the size of the paper makes a big difference in how well your zipline racer works. So for example, in this design with the three rubber bands, that's too much power, you could add a larger piece of paper on here, which is going to create more wind resistance so that the racer won't flip upside down and all of that energy will be diverted to the propeller instead. But if you add more paper, that also adds on more weight. That weight is going to pull down on the zip line where it contacts on these paper clips, which is going to generate more friction and make it go slower. 
That surrounding air is also rubbing against the side of the paper like this and slowing it down a little bit. So what I'm saying is the solution is not always to add more and more rubber bands and more and more paper. You want the razor to be light and speedy, but also not so powerful that it flips itself upside down. And you also don't want it to be so heavy that it generates excess drag and friction. So to make a zipline racer that goes as fast as possible, definitely experiment with the number of rubber bands, the types of rubber bands that you're using, the size of the paper cutout, and even where the paper cutout is positioned. For example, if you were to relocate the cutout so that it's lower on the zipline, that might be more effective because it will take more force to move something that's farther away from the axis of rotation. Oh yeah, and of course, you can draw whatever you want on this and cut it out into a shape of an animal or whatever else you want. Embellishing that paper cutout does make this project a lot more fun. Okay, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.